Hi, I'm Jeff Phillips. Welcome to this episode of Inkscape for Teachers. In this episode, I thought I'd look at how to produce a hatched pattern fill uh, that could be of use, for example, in shading uh, integrals rather than just a solid colour. So, here we go. What I'm going to do is just to show you how you can do it with a solid colour first and then we'll change it to a pattern fill. With the bucket tool, click it and then click in here and you can see I've got all sorts of dotted lines and funny colours there but um, I can change that back to solid line or actually a line of no width the colour I can perhaps change to yellow and you can see that with the bucket tool I've got to grow or shrink by half a millimetre that's a pretty good setting I think but it means it's overlapping the graph a little bit and we're actually not filling in there too well either but um, what I'm going to do to fix that up is just to click the select tool and then the nodes tool and drag this node down here. Don't worry about it overlapping the border, this one here too. You can see everything's pretty good over here. Oh, maybe not quite good here. Fix that up. Maybe that one just overlap just to be sure. We can send it to the back in a minute so the overlaps don't really matter. You can see I'm missing a bit here. If I drag it up there and up there and that's filled in nicely now if I zoom in and show you where it's overlapping i show a better example so I'll zoom out and then back in again down here if I click the select tool and then send to the back you can see it's behind the other strokes so that's how to do a solid fill and I think that was the subject of a previous video just have a look down in here that's okay now if I want to produce a pattern fill, I'm going to do my own hatching. I'll select the rectangle tool and drag something like that. And I'll make it, um, oh red doesn't really matter which colour. I'm going to take the border, oh, I'll leave it there for the moment. Select tool, control D to duplicate. And I'll make that one white because we need alternating red and white bands. And I'll select both of them and get rid of the border. I can shift click the cross here is one way to do it or I could have wound the border down to nothing now there's still the white one there select both of them and control G to group well actually uh, I'll ungroup that what I want to do is I want the white space to be a bit more of a uh, more area than the red uh, lines are going to be so I've just dragged that about one and a half times the width of the red stroke now I'll regroup them and go to object pattern object to pattern now if we look under fill and there's the pattern fill icon if you haven't clicked that you can click it now and under here just check for the one at the top that doesn't follow the pattern here you see 7147 looks out of order that's the one we've just created so what I'll do is I'm going to click the yellow fill and change it by clicking the pattern fill back to there 7147 you can try others in there but 7147 is the one and there's a good shading now you mightn't want it horizontal and this is a really curious thing in Inkscape if you want control over the bands press N for the node tool you see up in this area of screen there's a cross, a circle or a dot and a little square the circle controls the angle of the shading I can control click that to go to angle of 45 degrees if I want and the square so, uh, you can see affects the spacing I'll go back to something like that the cross affects where it where they start from you can see it changing within there if you don't want a band sort of right on the top you can perhaps do that but anyway click the select tool <coughs> excuse me you can see there's a quite an effective shading if I bring that to the front, actually doesn't seem to make uh, much difference, that's pretty good. So that uh, business before with the yellow fill wasn't uh, really necessary, but anyway, I'll click on it and send it to the back just in case. And that's how we can do a pattern fill hatched shading to indicate an integral in Inkscape. As always, thanks for watching.